So this is the RE Lab. Let me just get this. The RE Lab for the theme of June, which is play. Oh my goodness. I've been uh, waiting and waiting. And here in Colorado, we just had snow and a late frost. So it's still a little bit chilly, but I know play is going to come. I know summer is going to come. And I have a quick announcement and welcome first to everyone who's going to be joining us on the recording. A quick announcement, which is on Tuesday, May 18th, which is next week, we are going to be doing a Zoom and we being Scott and I about all the RE enhancements. So it's a sort of what's new for next year. We're working on the website as we speak, but if you want to hear it from the horses, and the horse's mouths, you can attend that. It's gonna be 1 p.m. Eastern time. So you can translate that to your own time zone. Tuesday, May 18th at this address for Zoom. We'll be putting out an email and things on Friday, but I thought I'd just let you all know. All right. So the way I do this, as you all know, almost all, is I do a little overview of the packet and then we go into what we each are doing for the theme of play in June. I'll start with a little joke. You know why angels can fly? It's because they take themselves lightly. Yeah, I just had to say that. My, this is one of my third grade level jokes. But taking lightly is what play is all about, isn't it? And I feel so strongly that we need humor and lightheartedness at this time. But I'll also tell you a story about when I was an author for Tapestry of Faith way back early 2000s. And I wrote Toolbox of Faith. And we had all these qualities of faith. The, the, tool for love is sanding because you sand off the rest rough edges of things. Tool for justice is hammer. So I said, well, I want to have humor in there as a faith quality. And my editor at the time said, well, Katie, maybe you don't understand. You're writing for the UUA and you need to be very serious. And I was like, yeah, but irreverence is a piece of Unitarian Universalist theology. And irreverence is a type of humor. Well, I ended up getting that inserted, but I had to go above her head because she still was thinking UU stuff had to be very serious. But anybody who knows me knows that I am not serious. And uh, sitting right next to me is one of my playful alter egos. This is Guinevere the Goose. Hello. Yes, get my mirror ready. Now notice with Guinevere, she is, oh, and I have somebody who just came in the waiting room. Let me just get, Guinevere, yes. For some reason, my hands were full, Gwen. Yeah, I know. Well, so Guinevere appeared on my bed after I had my appendix out. She appeared at the end of my hospital bed and she's been a friend ever since. And she, talks to the children oftentimes. And this is one of the ways that I do playful faith making. And Gwen's gonna make an appearance a little later. Gwen, you have to go away now. Yes, okay, all right. But I just wanted you to know that I'm far from a serious person, most of the time. I attribute that to the fact that I grew up during the, oh, oh she's gonna tip over, hold on. Stay there, Gwen. Grew up during the Vietnam era and things were very serious for UU teens. Yes, and ever since then, I've been getting less and less serious and more and more foolish so that by the time I'm 80, I'm, 80, I'm gonna be a total clown. So uh, here we go. We've got four sessions for June, the theme of play. One is playing with rainbows, and that's for Pride Month. One is playing just pretend, that's gonna be our puppet month. Puppet session, sorry. <laughs> one, is, one is 
playing with words has to do with the little bit of wordplay on Juneteenth. And one is playing with jokes and that's a jokes that can hurt and jokes that can heal. I just wanted to mention that I tried to pack this session with extra resources so that if you want to extend play into the summer, if you need those kinds of ideas, please do so. I know everyone's thinking about what we're gonna do in this crazy time of summer. So we tried to make it easier for you. So for rainbows, this is a favorite thing for children to draw anyway. So let's take advantage of that and layer on what Pride Month means. And there's some wonderful books coming out now describing Harvey Milk and why there was a pride, uh, flag for Pride, Month, pride Parade and also one on Just Be Amazing. Um, one of our brainstorm labs attendees two months ago when we were talking about play said he used some do-it-yourself canvas basic puppets that he sent out in his packet to the kids. And he got them from Oriental Trading, if you're okay with Ori Oriental Trading as a source. And he said they weren't that expensive. So he sent everyone one of these blank canvas little puppets and then they, cre they created their own as part of their activity box. So I just wanted to lift that up. So for just pretend, this is when I'm inviting you, like I invited the ministers at the Methodist Theological Seminary class that I offered in uh, Ohio to find their puppet self. Now, when I told the room of 20 people trying to be ministers, I got a very simple, similar response for, as from the UUA, which was, you know, these were serious people. They want to be ministers. And um, one lady <laughs> who was a Harvard student was very serious and she took umbrage. She was pretty upset that I was in a seminary class suggesting that they find their puppet mentor. Can I tell you that by the end of about three days, she came to me and she said, I had a dream last night and a moose puppet came to me and told me its name a moose puppet. And she now has her own puppet ministry with this moose puppet. So I thought, well, I'll take a little risk. Not everyone likes to do puppets, but you can make a puppet out of anything. In the packet, I suggest a spoon. Now this spoon put on its Rasta beads, so we might have a bit of a Jamaican accent, which I'm not really good at saying, but anyway, it's a spoon. And this spoon is, you could do as a foil because you can see yourself reflected in this spoon. What could you do with something that reflects back to you? And to give a personality to any puppet, you can start by saying to the children, the puppets often whisper their names in your ear. When you listen very closely, so this puppet just told me its name is Rasta Man. Hey, Rasta Man, what you doing? I'm doing good, Katie. Well, that's wonderful. So I can see myself in, in your face. Well, you can always see yourself when someone's looking at you. Well, not really. Look at, look at how it's reflecting everyone on my screen too, Katie. You always see yourself in someone's face when you're looking at them. Well, let me think about that. So you see where you can do a foil, you can talk about anything for all ages, a puppet foil as well. Now, you got to create a character for your puppet. Otherwise, children will just beat on each other. They'll hit each other. That's the first thing because it's waving around in the air and their arm wants to go bang. That's just common. So pretty soon after they whisper their name, you create a character. So, so Rastaman, what's your favorite game? Well, that's easy. It's the card game Spoons. Well, okay. 
Uh, what's your favorite bird, Rastaman? And you see how I'm looking at him? Well, the spoonbill heron, right? So you play this up. What's your favorite music? There's a lady who plays the spoons called the Spoon Lady. And I put that link into the packet. So be sure to check her out. She is awesome. Uh, what's your favorite nursery rhyme, Rastaman? Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon, the little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with a spoon. I understand why that's your favorite nursery rhyme. So you've created a character. I'd, I think maybe Rustaman wasn't the best, but I happen to have these beads, so blah, blah, blah. Anyway, maybe a ribbon around his neck or its neck. Okay, so let's do it with Guinevere. Now, Guinevere has quite the personality. She's a bit audacious. She has met Bill Sinkford when he was UU president. She has met John Burens when he was UU president. And she hasn't met Nancy right now, but she's thinking she'd like to. Isn't that right, Guinevere? Yes, of course. And she she challenges the children because she doesn't believe that we are a church because there is no picture of the great gander in the sky hanging on the sanctuary walls. I think it's ridiculous. So the children have to prove to her that we are a church. You see how lovely that works? And they, she walks down the aisle when we come up the aisle for floral ages and she will give goose kisses to children who would like them. So Guinevere, what's your favorite game? Well, that's easy. What do you think, you guys? It's duck, duck, goose. Yeah, you, 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 that's silly. Okay, it's duck, duck, goose. And what's your favorite bird? Ha <laughs> ha. Well, that's silly too. I'm, it's goose, geese. I love geese. What's your favorite food, Gwen? That's gooseberry pie. <laughs> You thought it was going to be seeds, didn't you? Or algae. Um, I understand you just came back from Acapulco where you migrated. How was it? Oh, it was wonderful, but it's re even beautiful here now. I'm waiting for my eggs to hatch right now. My partner is sitting on them so I can visit with you. <laughs> now, here's the trick. Well, who's your favorite person, Guinevere? Oh, well, I, I have a wonderful partner, but all in all, I have this guy and his name is Renard. Oh, Renard, that means fox in French. Gwen, are you telling me your one of your favorite friends is a fox? Yes, and he keeps inviting me to dinner. Well, I don't think that's what you he means when he wants you for dinner. Oh, okay, anyway, so you see where we go? And of course, she wears a boa because the children notice she doesn't have real wings, but she has a feather boa. And she has little floppy legs hanging down. Oh, anyway, I have lots of fun with Guinevere. There we go. Okay, she's going to sit there for a while. So <laughs> I encourage you to find a puppet ministry. What little animal is, or thing? I mean, you know, I do, there behind me is bear and butterfly that I do the little skits on. Find a little thing and have it whisper its name and then create its character and see what you can do. And the children don't mind if you use your lips to move. They don't, because they're gonna be watching the, the animal, aren't they? The bird. All right, the next one is wordplay. That's very simple. There's lots of suggestion for games. And then the jokes that hurt and the jokes that help. And I'll tell you what precipitated that session that I wanted to do. Every year at Boulder Valley UU Fellowship, which is the congregation I served before I became a Soul Matters DRE, we had a huge day camp in the summer. 50 children, 16 to 20 high school counselors, 16 to 20, maybe no, more like eight to 10 junior high counselors in training. And it was offered for 12 years. So by the time 
we had counselors at the end of the time when I was there, they had been campers and then counselors in training and they practically ran the thing. We had a young man who we thought was gonna be a great counselor in training. Only the second day, several of the other counselors came to me and said he was telling racist jokes on the playground in front of the children. And at the time, my co-director was an African-American person and it broke that person's heart that this child, this young teen was telling racist jokes. Now in our culture here in Colorado, the racism was against the Mexicans. It still broke his heart, broke that other co-director's heart. So we went and talked to him and you know he was obviously very facile at apologizing to adults and he said he would never do it again and we believed him and the next day several of the counselors came to me and said he was telling racist jokes again well long story short we ended up asking him to leave because he didn't seem to be able to stop doing that after three warnings. And what it proved to me was that children are children no matter where they are and who they're with. And here in this, what we were hoping to be a trusted safe space, we were experiencing the very racism we were trying to remove ourselves from. And when I, wrote this session about jokes that hurt and jokes that can heal. I thought of this young man and the journey that he is still on and the journey that we had to go on to emphasize that we are a trusting and safe spot in that day camp. So I thought of that and I thought I'd share that with you because in my 35 years of being a DRE, I've seen all that happen. And just because the children come to church doesn't mean that suddenly things are gonna evaporate. And we've had homophobic jokes and we've had gay bashing and we've had racist jokes and we just deal with them. And we use it as an opportunity to reiterate that we are aspiring in our covenant to be a people of but we're not there yet. And we make promises, but yes, we break promises sometimes. And it's always a journey, isn't it? So that's what I thought about when I wrote that joke session, because it's an opportunity to say to the children, some things that people think are funny are actually very hurtful. We might laugh because we're uncomfortable with that, hearing something. But for us as Unitarian Universalists, we aren't comfortable with jokes that hurt. But there's a lot of jokes that can heal us because laughter heals us. And then you can share all the wonderful jokes that are existing that aren't hurtful. Like, why do angels fly? <laughs> because they take themselves lightly or elephants or whatever. So that's my summary and now we're going to move into let me just see yes perfect a time of sharing what we're doing to implement i know katie just shared these wonderful resources with me and i hope you'll do it with everyone else we're going to share let's do the challenges first because i like to end on an upbeat note just like our services have this wave you know you you bring in the sad stuff but you always end on an upbeat note Ask your minister about that sometimes. It's very fascinating how they craft these things. Um, so let's do challenges, then opportunities, and then takeaways. And if someone would like to be the timekeeper, well, all that means is you hold up your smartphone when uh, let's do a minute and a half of sharing for each of these things. Oh, and while you're thinking about who's gonna do it, I just wanna thank Sam for doing last month's 
uh, hosting. She's the hostess with the mostest. I loved it. It was great. She's so, so good. I think I should just give it to her every day. Yes. <laughs> yes. So thank you, Sam. I was away and wasn't able to be there in person. Is there someone who would like to hold their smartphone up after two, after a minute and a half? There, Ashley's going to do it. Thank you, Ashley. So let's start with challenges that you're looking at for. It could be summer. It could be the month of play. It could be right now in mid-May. Um, let's start on my screen. I'm going to change my view here. And on my screen first is Sam. Uh, so our, our challenge is the, my minister and I decided maybe our particular congregation wasn't quite ready for play in June, um, over the summer. Sure. We can stretch that out over the summer and have a lot of fun with, with play, but we felt we needed one more step. Mm -hmm to let them know it's okay to play. So we're um, pulling up from the archives and we're doing emergence Ooh. in June, Ooh. that we're emerging into this playful mindset that it's okay, that it's safe to start playing again. So that's, that's the challenge we're working with. That was moment. just my phone. It was not. Okay. <laughs> it's just somebody ringing me out of the blue. Sorry. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the grander challenge of figuring out how to reopen our doors for RE. Other areas um, of the church, it's it's not that it's simple, but it's a little more logical to open certain areas. RE is that that's a big one. I know I'm not the only one mm -hmm. trying to figure that out. So those are my challenges at the at this moment. Awesome. And just let me ask, did you go to the individual packet sales and just buy the emergence packets? Is that or did you just pick it from your for yourself? It's um, we we actually we put it to a vote with our worship team Ooh. on which we we uh, the minister and I went through the archives, Soul Matter archives. And we looked at what would be a good progression going from story to play. And there was emergence and a few others that we looked at. And the the winner of that vote, I guess you would say, was emergence. And so we we pulled from that particular packet that's sitting in the Soul Matters archives. Awesome. And we're using that. I'm glad it was of use. Thank you. You're welcome. And you see, that's what we expect everyone to do is take the building blocks, do what you want, because our congregations are so independent minded, aren't they? Yes. Thank you. And next on my screen is Monique. Welcome from Augusta, Maine. Cool. Hi, so I'm Monique and I'm the coordinator of Lifespan Faith Formation at the Augusta UU Church in Maine, not Georgia. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so we're really actually winding down. We don't have an RE program for the summer, um, but I'm curious about possibilities in the future for a camp. And I really liked the idea of play and incorporating that all those features in a camp. So I'm just kind of playing around and, and seeing the challenges, uh, you know, competing with, with other camps and, and what's available to families, but uh, really looking, because our numbers have fallen quite a bit. So um, the COVID pandemic certainly didn't help with that. Uh, but so I, I see something like that in our future. And so I, I wanted to kind of get a balance of what other people are doing. Um, I have a lot of good connections with um, my colleagues in Maine, especially the Mid Coast Maine region. Uh, so yeah, so my challenge is uh, yeah, trying to rebuild our numbers and looking at using the Soul Matters packets 
for to run a camp. Neat. Yeah, having our teen youth be some of our advisors, you know. Yeah, so that's where that's where we are. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Monique. Yeah. Uh, I can't I can't tell you how many memories that brings up. I I offered camps for two different churches 15 years each and I I find camp is 36 hours or more of of contact time and that equals every single Sunday during the year and that mm -hmm. was the basis of my programs or our programs was those camps first oh, years yeah they're a little rough because everyone's sort of sure. fitting it in their swimming schedule and all that but but then oh oh my goodness well enough of that okay Ashley <laughs> and I'll be your timekeeper Um, my challenge right now is June is kind of a transitional month um, where we'll be ending our Zoom RE classes and starting in person for the mm -hmm. summer. Oh, neat. Um, and there is disagreement um, <laughs> around that. And um, it's created a real challenge for me because I'm being kind of asked to do one thing. and the RE committee and even the Central East Region um, staff are saying different things. So, so I have, yeah, it's pretty, I'm not quite sure how to navigate it at the moment, um, but I feel in a kind of a difficult position to um, know what to do. <laughs> yes. yes. Um... And maybe it isn't your decision. You just, mm -hmm. as a staff person, sit and say, well, I'm sure you're smart people and you read the CDC guidelines and mm -hmm. tell me what to do. <laughs> Boy, that is, that's, that's tough. I do think there are guidelines out of the UUA also, which may help them make a decision. Yeah. Now, Katie sent the chat that said she had a lawn crew. Maybe they've moved on. Katie, are you still underneath the sound of mowers? <laughs> I think she might be. We'll give her a minute or two. Well, thank you. Lots of challenges, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. There you go. Oh. And we'll stop that one. There. My goodness, my phone is all sorts of noises these days. Okay. So now we've done challenges. Now let's do opportunities and then we'll move into takeaways. So opportunities and we'll start with Sam. Uh, an opportunity that's um, coming up uh, Thinking of, of June specifically for the um, for our outdoor event, we've been you know doing these little pop up events. Uh, we're doing a gardening party, Aww. which I'm really looking forward to. Everyone, you know, getting soil everywhere and <laughs> getting into some compost and just being outside together. Everyone's really been looking forward to that. And the other opportunity, looking forward to summer is uh, five of our of the congregations in our cluster, five of the six are sharing ministry duties mm. uh, for five weeks out of the summer since, you know, a lot of staff are on vacation. And so uh, each congregation is not only leading worship on a given Sunday, but also leading um, an RE time. For, for a family chapel. So all of us DREs are working together to figure out how to provide that experience to families. And we're all really looking forward to it and lightening the summer load and, and working together. That'll mm. be a lot of fun. Mm. So that's a, a good opportunity I'm looking forward to. And do you get the rest of the time off that you're not in charge? I mean, um, I, I know I'll be taking a little bit of time <laughs> off, uh -huh. but also just not having to plan something out for five weeks, just one week. 
it's that even that's just a nice little vacation from planning <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> I totally get it <laughs> and I'm so glad you're sharing because each of us in our own little congregations why are we all reinventing the wheel I mean that's one of the basic reasons that soul matters exists it's so each of us doesn't have to reinvent the wheel <laughs> I mean oh my goodness think of all the talent that's going on right now in these creative ideas, you creative DREs. And um, I wrote it up in curriculum across my whole career. I mean, I, I deliberately negotiated contracts that said, I don't want to be full time. I want to be 30 hours a week with benefits so that I had 10 hours a week to write down these curriculums. So I wrote a summer camp curriculum. I wrote the spirit of adventure curriculum all these things because I didn't like reinventing the wheel and I didn't want other people to do it either so I encourage sharing yeah yes um Monique I want to talk to you maybe right after we're done about that um so cool all right Monique next time it's your time <laughs> yeah I was actually writing that down your summer camp curriculum <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, um, I'll just send it to you for free because uh, okay. I'm closing okay. down that part of my life. So I'll yeah. just send it to you. Anybody else yeah. wants it, I'll send it to you too. So, um, yeah, so I am winding down. My last day actually is June 13th. Yeah. And yeah, and so I am looking forward to having the time and space to um, have that opportunity to really be able to explore and brainstorm and think about things and I want to visit some other congregations um, you know see what they do in the summer um, I have a couple of camps that I'll be visiting volunteering at so that you know I'm getting my feet wet so to speak and what what to look for so yeah a lot of opportunity and uh, I'm just looking forward to that time so I won't I won't be back on the clock until August and we have a lot of changes happening at our, at our church. Our minister of 12 years is leaving. Mm. Um, yeah, her last uh, Sunday is this Sunday coming up. We have a farewell service. And uh, so that's a big transition. And um, our interim minister will come in August. So I do anticipate, you know, trying to connect and meet up with with our interim minister. So, you know, a lot of things that are shifting, but a lot of doors of opportunity opening up at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of creative people out there. Love what I'm hearing people are doing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, wow. that's where I am. Yay. Thank you. Great. I can tell you're looking forward to it too, your summer. All right, next on my list is Ashley and I'll do this for you. So um, I am excited about um, a service actually that I'm helping with in June, which um, will be a play service. And so we're planning to have like five, all, our services are all on Zoom and will continue to be through the summer. Um, and so we're gonna have about five or six breakout rooms where with different opportunities for play. Um, so different things that folks can join and do for about 20 minutes in the service. Um, and uh, so I'm, you know, this actually is helping me um, formulate some ideas and just trying to be creative. What can we do together as a whole congregation? Oh, lovely. On Zoom. <laughs> mm -hmm. On Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom's a Denver-based business by the way near me they have big ads in the denver airport and you know i think they're contributing to our economy quite a bit since the ski economy is in the tank okay um katie cartman back <laughs> hi do you want to do both i can give you extra time uh no it's okay um i'm looking at you know, like many UU congregations, ours could use to embody play better. So I'm kind of glad this is kind of the summer theme. So we can play with it for a good long time and 
look at what reopening entails as more of a experi learn of you know trying new things out and isn't it good to be back together and let's not concentrate so much on the you know nitty gritty and the let's get back to all of the things we did before that piece um and i think there's some real power there um speaking of power i did want to mention i said this to katie at the beginning um juneteenth actually happened about an hour south of my congregation so wow. you know i in a normal year we could do a field trip but um one thing I wanted to say was the, the way it's written up in the curriculum is one of the understandings of why we eat red foods and drink red drinks, and that's about blood. Another way of looking at it is um, red is a color of power and strength and resilience. Um, and I'm linking an article that goes into a little more detail there. I also think that might, um, it may, might be a better jumping off point particularly for those of us who only just have a couple of minutes in a worship service, um, going Juneteenth, strawberry blood, and then moving on to the next thing okay. might be a little jarring, um, but I encourage you to read that article. There's some really neat stuff about it, how it all goes back to Africa. Awesome. Um, you know, even if you think that red Kool-Aid seems an awfully modern thing, the roots are ancient. Oh, wonderful. I love being in a sharing circle. Thank you, Katie, wonderful. So the next part of our Leaders Lab is takeaways. And this mirrors what I used to do with the children in the children's chapel, which is during joys and concerns, we go around the circle and drop a rock in our lighted candle. But you've gone around the circle and if you don't have a ton of kids, <laughs> you can say, now that you've heard everyone speak, are there things that you have thought about? And so for us, now that you've heard everyone speak, is there something you might take away or you'd hear, like to hear more about or that you are reminded that you'd like to share? So that's what I call the takeaway part. It's like synchronicity and see what we can do with that. So Sam, why don't you start? Uh, I'm, I'm reminding myself to be playful as well because it's the end of the year and we're usually like drained and excited and we're pulling from the dredges and oh my gosh, now I have to plan this out. But I, huh, and, and uh, if we're, talking about play and encouraging play, then it's also modeling play as well. So I need to um, remind myself to be playful mm -hmm. and play. What? That's crazy. I need to go out and play too. <laughs> nice. I love it. Yes. Thank you. And Monique. Yeah, so um... I really enjoyed uh, Sam's idea of um, collaborating with the other um, RE colleagues uh, uh, and splitting that summer up and how might we do that. And uh, I think that's exciting, especially if I did a camp and some of it was virtual, you know, we could be in Ellsworth one, one day and Belfast another and <laughs> um, yes, I, you know, already I'm starting to brainstorm things and, uh, yeah. And, and of course I love the topic of play. I'm all about play. Um, and especially with early childhood education, I mm -hmm. just, it's just, um, the best way to learn, uh, mm -hmm. is through play. So to have to come back to that and when things have been so heavy, and challenging mm -hmm. and to allow ourselves that freedom has is really um yeah it's about joy and uh sometimes you need to have that one thing in your house that you can look at and say i have joy today and bring that um to your community so yeah so i'm, I'm very excited already thank you good 
and Ashley. Well, um, let's see. <clears throat> I also think play is a great um, theme for June and I'm looking forward to, um, I actually think that I will probably try to extend it um, into um, July. And um, I'm also interested in the summer camp theme. Um, I'm not sure that um, we will be doing a summer camp, <clears throat> but I think the idea of a summer camp can be, you know, adapted and used um, in, in what I can do. So I'm very interested in, in that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thank you. Great. Great. And Katie. Um, first of all, thank you for the reminder that if I'm sending puppets home, I need to like order them. Um, <laughs> you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> um, and secondly, I'm actually thinking about seeing if I can do a quick interview with a couple of the kids about the importance of play mm -hmm. that I can you know, share with the whole congregation. Oh, that this isn't something that stops when you're seven. Yep. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? And you know, like um, for those of us who are lifespan in the soul, the small group packet, um, it encourages them as part that of their session. That was from the last time. Sorry. Part of their session in June to take part of their usual time, listening time to play a game with one another. And I know that for some of my groups, it's gonna be a really tough sell. But if there's a little nudge at the start of the message where I send this to them, that's like, you know, do you remember the joy of playing and what you learned, you know, that sort of a thing to set the stage as opposed to just, here's how you can, you know, have time that you thought you were going to get to spend in deep sharing and abandon it, you know, that, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes there's a real scarcity. Oh, Katie, that's a wonderful idea. Yes. Yes. So my personal reflection on all this is I came from a family that didn't play games very much. First of all, it was my Methodist Unitarian Universalist grandparents who were teetotalers and, you know, dance, play, cards, all those things fell into those, that sinful category. And then my parents, they were just serious, period. They, I mean, they told us there was no Santa Claus from day one because they were humanists. They were you, you humanists. And they just like, there's no Easter Bunny. There's no Jesus. It's like, oh my God. So maybe that's why I love play so much because I'm doing what everybody else does is leave their faith behind, you know, in a way. And I'm married into this family that all they do is play. And through the pandemic, they have played a nightly game of spades, which is a card game with their mother who's 90. And, you know, it's like you said about the small group, Katie, it's not serious deep sharing. It's, man, you stole my ace. You trumped my ace. <laughs> but then in between, in those lovely little in-between cracks comes the love and the deep sharing. You know, mom says, I'm just so lonely sometimes. And I so appreciate all my children getting on. And we don't all get on every night because you can only play with four people. But she's got this and it's what's pulled her through being quarantined in a little independent living place. So yes, I'm all for games. And I have seven grandchildren and guess what we do? We play games all the time. Yeah. So thank you for sharing how this can help you get a little more playful and lighthearted. Yes. Um, I didn't put a lot of UU jokes in this packet. This was a thing back right at the turn of the millennium, 1990. I was doing UU identity renaissance modules a lot. And we had a whole session on what jokes say about UUs. And so there's all the jokes of the only time you hear Jesus Christ is when somebody trips on the stairs or the only time you hear well, how many you use does it take to change a light bulb? You know, it takes a committee and they, you know. And of course I really liked it, but 
as we were critiquing, as we were writing the second or third edition of UU Identity, some people said, you know, this, is, this isn't so nice sometimes. So that's why I didn't put the UU jokes in. I just didn't want to make people feel bad. So it's something to think about. I have to admit, sometimes I wish I could tell all my UU jokes, but we move on, don't we, when we learn things. So anyway, there's another little insight into what's in the packet and what's not in the packet. Um, last comments. We have a little time for our hour. Uh, this will be recorded and shared on our YouTube channel where all of these reside. If you ever like to listen to another one while you're eating lunch. <laughs> I know people do that. Um, any last comments at all about play? Yes, Katie. Just thank you. It's fun to be together, isn't it? We can be so isolated. Oh, I know. I, I would like a last comment on Monique doing the summer camp with all these places. This is one of the things that Zoom has opened up for us, hasn't it? In other um, of these recordings, I've mentioned, for instance, that there was a church that did crossing paths during the pandemic, they, they had to jump online. They didn't know they had to jump online. So this was last spring, but they realized that they could ask me to come as one of the writers of Crossing Paths and be a part of their recorded service with all their children doing their middle schoolers, doing their Crossing Paths reflections as part of the service. And that's a new opportunity. I was able to attend this congregational program in Maryland. And at the same time, these children had invited aunts and uncles in Virginia. Somebody was there from Maine. And suddenly our boundaries are, are leaving the building. Maybe we're not gonna be so building oriented when we can say, yes, you could go to these three different places for a Zoom summer camp. That's fascinating. It's, it's blowing my mind that we can do that. And I think as we move into what we're calling multi-platform church, that's one of the pieces that's gonna stick with us moving forward. And what you're doing too, Sam. I'm, I'm really interested. We're already coming up with plans on how to make aspects of RE multi-platform. And in particular, we're, we're doing our coming of age program this coming year. How do we make that multi-platform? Not all of the youth can be there in person. Um, figuring out, you know, how we do the different, you know, hikes and, and whatnot, we can figure it out. Zoom, Zoom has opened up a lot. Continuing on with chapel, these kids are real, the, the younger ones, in my experience, really like being on Zoom. They're having a blast with it. Uh, this past year, there were five or six congregations through ac across Southern California that came together and were able to do a massive coming of age program together. So Zoom, Zoom's been really, it's, it, yeah, I agree. It's opened doors and I'm curious what happens with this multi-platform world because it's not going away. I know for our congregation, we're like full force, multi-platform, let's make it work. It's going to be, we're, we're excited for it. Other comments? Just a note about this, uh, John Roberto, one of the big Catholic lifespan faith formation authors and one of my trainers, uh, in 2003 has been calling it hybrid church. But you may have heard the, the comments uh, among our BIPOC UUs is that that's a little elitist white supremacist because hybrid connects to the Prius, which is the rich white people's car. So 
That's why we're calling it multi-platform. So if you'd like to learn that, please feel free to do it. Yeah, we're, we're so Soul Matters is calling it multi-platform as well, which I think describes it even more. It's not, it's um, like a tree house with different places you can go. Well, we are at the end of our time. I want to encourage you to be playful and lighthearted, maybe even fly around a little bit in these coming summer months. And I wish you all the best and thanks for attending. <laughs>